Hey, Vote Myers. This here is Un, playing something short and simple to cleanse the palate following a certain Saturn based marathon. This here is Mystic Defender, an unexceptional but perfectly competent 1989 Genesis side scroller. It is also a delicensed localization of a Japanese licensed game, much like Last Battle was to Fist of the North Star. The Japanese version is based on a comic called Kujaku O, or Peacock King, about which I know precisely fuck all, except that it's about a Buddhist exorcist, and that the anime adaptation was released in the States as Spirit Warrior. So if anyone in the audience is an expert on Peacock King or Spirit Warrior, please feel free to share with the rest of the class. I should also note that this game was known back home as Kujaku O2. Sega's first Peacock King game was on the Master System, featured vaguely Shadowgate-style adventure game sections, and was released in the West as Spellcaster. But enough talk! Have at you! Sega! Zareth, a henchman of the evil King Zhao, has abducted Alexandra, the daughter of the Supreme Deity. Imprisoning his hostage deep in the Azuchi Castle in Japan, he plans to use the Fair Maiden's spirit to revive his evil master. Joe Yamato, a veteran fighter who is an expert in magic, single-handedly proceeds to the castle in order to put a stop to Zareth's fiendish ambition and to save Alexandra. Well, there is our basic premise, but it's had the serial numbers uh, filed off from the source material across the Pacific. Uh, so once again, if anyone actually knows anything about Kujaku O, feel free to enlighten us, because I'm certainly not going to do the research. Hadouken! Alright, in the options menu, there's a control remap, but I like the defaults just fine, and a sound test. And the difficulty level, which only seems to affect the number of lives you get. If it has any effect on enemy properties, it's too subtle for me to tell. Uh, also, there's only normal and two uh, grades of easy. No hard mode for us, but that's okay. Normal's a reasonable challenge. Anyway, more intro. Joe, if you hope to rescue Alexandra, Immediately come to Azuchi Castle. Well, the other intro kind of told us that already, but okay. And here's the actual game engine. In the lower left, we have our three bar life meter. In the lower right, the number of lives we have. And up top, our magic. We start with one spell, which you can rapid fire for piddling damage. Charge it up a bit for a bigger shot. Or charge it up all the way for a very damaging shot which will remain useful throughout the game, especially in uh, fully charged form. I believe the US uh, manual called that Psycho Magic, and so I will do the same. Uh, this up here is a rapid charge power-up, which causes our R-Type meter to fill much faster. It's very useful, and lasts until you die. And here already is our first mid-boss. You can hit him with little balls of the Psycho Magic, but a single charge shot will put him down. Uh, up here we have our blue uh, health restor- uh, eh, sorry, tongue-tied. Our blue health restoration, which gives you back a bar if you're missing one. But you can't go above three. And notice how Joe has a nice sensible uh, sort of martial outfit. In the Japanese version, Kujaku was wearing more of a flowing monastic robe which look kind of dress-like, and we can't be doing that to uh, delicate Western gender sensibilities. So uh, Joe here gets the more butch outfit. Our second mid-boss shoots these blue acid things at you, but once again a single charge shot will put him down. The whole first level is very easy. Uh, I just picked up our second magic, but it's not very useful against our first main boss here, so I'll demo that in the next level. Anyway, this guy flips around as long as you're in the treetops. If you're lower to the ground, he'll roll into a ball, and he can't be hurt that way. But as you can see, he too dies very easily to charge shots. Hadouken. And on to the second rather creepy level, in which I will briefly demo the fire magic. 
fully charged, you get a nice big plume of fire that you can direct around for as long as the meter lasts. If you do a lesser charge, of course the meter is smaller, which means it doesn't last as long, and the length of the flame is also shorter. It's very useful for these levels, uh, for this level, I'm sorry, because most of the enemies here can take a hit or two. And while the fire magic doesn't do as much damage in a single hit as a fully charged psycho, its duration means you can keep it uh, focused on enemies, and it will have a bigger cumulative effect. Ugh, sewer babies. Uh, if you shoot these guys with Psycho, they just melt into a bloody pulp that still crawls around and completely wigs me out. However, if you literally kill them with fire, they just die normally. I should note that this whole level just really disturbed me as a kid. I just hated playing this part of the game. Uh, especially because of the sewer babies, but the... Uh, bloated green heads bouncing down the stairs didn't help matters at all either. These days it doesn't bother me quite so much, but it still seems a little bit wrong. Uh, both the sewer babies and the bloaty heads uh, in the Japanese version are more of a normal flesh tone instead of being kind of blue-gray. Uh, it is left as an exercise for the reader whether that is any better or worse. And yes, I know the charging and fire sounds are very annoying. Uh, believe me, if I could do anything to get rid of them, I would. Fortunately, uh, after this level, I will never again be quite so completely reliant on the fire magic. So at least you'll be hearing a bit less of that constant buzzing. Uh, here we have a jump that completely sucks, so I'm going to save state. Oh, I actually made it on the first try. That's really surprising, considering I'm recording this. <coughs> if you blow that jump, you basically have to redo the level. Uh, this one will also cause you to lose some progress, so... Save state. And good thing I did. There we go. Uh, third magic. A slight charge will cause a six-way shot, a full charge, a bouncing six-way shot, which is really the only way this is useful. But in some circumstances, such as this boss fight, it can be very useful indeed. We have a bunch of monks. They teleport around, and they are very easy to hit with the bouncy shot. Like I just completely failed to do. There we go. It lets you focus on dodging their shots, which can be kind of difficult if you have to aim at them. And they turn into nice brown lumps when they die. Just all the enemy designs in this level are perfectly charming, aren't they? Do we have more monks? I think we have one more monk. Where's our monk? There's our monk. Our monk is dead. But then, I guess the lead monk comes by with some sort of unholy book and turns them all into spiders. Just a shitty day all around. That puts us on the third level, and we're getting low on time, so we will save round three for next time. Until then, I'm Un, thanks for tuning in, as always, and I'll see you soon.